Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Torah Gems. I'm Robert Host. Uh, this week we're going to be discussing Vayikra, um, which is uh, the first reading out of Leviticus. We're going to be reading out of Isaiah. There's uh, uh, references in Hebrews and references in um, Romans this week and uh, the first three chapters of Luke. Um, this week uh, we begin to see the service in the temple. We begin to see the, uh, the tabernacle, that is, uh, we begin to see the, 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 the sacrifices begin to be, you know, the ordinance of the sacrifices. And some of the things I've been discussing up until this point have been the covenants of God and glossing over the covenants of God. And, of course, we have our first three covenants, which are our um, universal covenants to all mankind. We have the Edemic, the, the Edenic, uh, the Adamic, and the Noatic. Um, we also have now the, the Abrahamic, which we've already seen. And, and then we move on to, we're in the Mosaic now. Um, the Torah itself was never a covenant. Uh, the, the covenant was with uh, the people to keep it. Now, um, one of the things that, uh, and of course we moved to the Davidic and the Renewed. Now, one of the things that I've noticed here is that you see God delivers his people out of bondage before he gives them the Torah. And then he begins to prepare his people. Okay, this is a, a process of preparing them to receive their Messiah. Uh, you know, I, there's there's many uh, messianic uh, overtones throughout the Torah. Of course, there would have to be because why else would we need a Messiah for God Himself to come? Uh, but this week, some of the things that I noted were were quite interesting. Um, continuing on a common thread, as I say, uh, uh, on the covenants and like I say, glossing over that Mosaic covenant. I was reading this week. Um, doing research as I always do, and some of the teachings that 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 are prevalent in the Christian Church. Um, something I want to clarify: I never rail against the Church itself. What I do is I rail against the untruth which is perpetrated in the Church, which is a small group of individuals. Not unlike when we first saw the you know early Church fathers who were all blatantly anti-Semitic. Some were heretics like Marcion. Some were a little bit more devious. You know, I'm not going to name names here, and I'm not going to go into a cursory historical study about, you know, the early church and what's wrong with it. What I want to talk about today is that covenant, that perpetual thing that uh, is to be given through uh, Yeshua HaMashiach by us who are coming into um, not only the Hebraic roots of our faith, but a realization that the whole Bible applies to us. You know, I read a, a quote here this week which said that, you know, it was just that typical, you know, you know, we worship on Sunday because that's the Lord's day now. And, you know, church, I just, I, it wearies me. It's so untrue. You know, I came out of um, a Pentecostal background myself. And, you know, people had that dedication to Sunday. And most of them have just been taught that that was the Sabbath. They've been taught a religious system. Many of us have been taught uh, that this religious system. Well, you know what, in the, in this for such a time as this, God is restoring His Torah and the desire and and to walk in the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God. He's causing us to return. This is an answer to prayer to me. I mean, lately I haven't had any dealings with anyone who said, "Oh, you know, Rob wants to put himself under the law" or anything like that, and and just ridiculous statements which show how little the church really understands about this book, who's written by Hebrews for Hebrews. Okay, and if you don't know it. You're a Hebrew. You're part of Israel, either by adoption or by blood. And, you know, one of the points that was made to me um, through one of my textbooks for the course that I'm in is that, um, you know, we, we, we get into our Abrahamic covenant, but something interesting about the Abrahamic covenant. Abraham wasn't a Hebrew until he had faith in God and became circumcised. Now, today it's a circumcision of the heart. But what happens after we come into faith? You know, in Acts chapter 15, it talks about you know, the four things that were required of believers, and I don't think many believers do those today, because they think that they're not under the law. Well, you know what? Those were, were the men, devout men who were trained in the Torah, the teaching and instruction, guidance and deliverance of God, and what their instruction was for the new believers to come that were coming into faith on how they should conduct themselves so they could have table fellowship with their fellow members of Malchut Shemayim, the kingdom of heaven. And how this was to be done is that you know, that would get them entrance into the synagogue because at the end of chapter 15, it just says, for Moses has had himself preached in every Sabbath, being read in, in his synagogues everywhere. They just assume, okay, you're going to go to the synagogue. 
Another cursory study I was doing was uh, the Sabbath isn't mentioned in the New Testament. Lie from the pit of hell. It's all through there. Entering his rest means talking about the Sabbath. And it's all through Acts 15, post Yeshua's dead, where death and resurrection, of course, where the, the apostles were keeping the Sabbath. And I just find it interesting that someone would have their heart so dead set on rebellion, on, on not following along with God's teaching and instruction, guidance and deliverance, his, his instructions for life, which include, you know, keeping of the Sabbath, the, the appointed feast days, and, of course, following his commandments. And like the Bible says, hid commandments are not um, commandments. Are I not noticed this week, it's a heart attitude. And um, I'm going to admit something to you. <laughs> I liked my steak bloody, and I liked the fat on the edge of it, okay? And, <clears throat> bless God, I, I, uh, I, I don't partake of those things anymore but i noticed here in leviticus 3 16 and 17 it says the priest shall offer them up in the smoke in smoke on the altar as food an offering by fire for a soothing aroma all the fat is the lord it is a perpetual statute throughout your generations and all your dwellings you shall not any fat or blood the life is in the blood but what about the fat the toxins are in my are in the fat my brothers and sisters the toxins are stored there I, yuck. God didn't want you to eat it because you have to know this. God didn't want you to eat it because he didn't want you to die early. Praise. So we see there in Romans chapter 8 that it's a conflict of these two natures. And we see that working today. There are those that uh, will say that the, the Old Testament's done away and all this kind of stuff. I say that a lot in my teachings from week to week because my desire is to inspire. Desire is to inspire. Hey, that's kind of witty. Anyway, a little joke there. Um, a friend on uh, this week made a comment. Um, Alan, I uh, give kudos to him for this. He said that, remember, when people won't accept truth, they'll be under strong delusion. I was blown away about something that I had read that was just so ridiculous. Here, now, let me get this straight. We're to believe... Through a cursory reading, the antinomian says in Romans 8 that the Torah is done away because we walk according to the Spirit. You know what? Hello? Walking according to the Spirit in the Hebrew mindset is walking the Torah. And you know what? Christ didn't come to do away with the Torah, my friends. He came to cause it to us to stand up. Okay? Another Hebraic um, uh, looking at uh, Matthew 5.17 says how... They used to teach that when you were correctly interpreting the Torah, they would say, you're fulfilling the Torah. And when you were incorrectly interpreting the Torah, they would say, you've destroyed the Torah. So Yeshua is using Hebraic terms. We need to study with our glasses, our Greek glasses off. This is, this is a, a text written by Hebrews to Hebrews. Two our Hebrews. Abrahamic covenant people, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and I am saved. I, and we are grafted into the tree. What does that mean? Abraham was became a Hebrew through faith. That's how we have acquired the adoption as sons, through faith. And then, obedience. Obedience is always tested by God. There's no way on God's green earth, people, that Jesus came to set us free from the thing that he's going to use to test us in the last days. No, God is raising up in his people and causing them, according to scripture, to desire to walk out his commandments, statutes, and judgments. So we read these these pictures in Hebrews 8 and, and, and uh, sorry, in Hebrews 10 and, and, and Romans 8, and, and people say, oh, well, it's types and shadows, so it's done away with. No, that means that somebody's casting the shadow. It's Yeshua. He has come and caused this to stand up. So what I'm saying this week is that God uses his word in our obedience as a litmus test. Uh, the Mosaic Covenant was never about salvation. It was about blessing. Um, in Luke 1, 6, it says, They were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. And that is a reference to Zacharias and Elizabeth. Why would this have been mentioned if it wasn't something that was used as a measurement of someone's commitment and their walk, that their confession ought to match their walk? Shabbat shalom ought to match their walk.